The new Across the Spider-Verse trailer has so many cool spider variants. I'm gonna attempt to name as many as I can and show you the actual comic books that they're from. Right off the bat, of course, we got Miles Morales, the star of the movie. Miles first appeared in Ultimate Fallout issue 4 from 2011. Miles was bitten by a spider from the same experiment that made his universe's Peter Parker turn into Spider-Man. The spider had hitched a ride home on his uncle who also happened to be the Prowler and bit Miles one day when he was over visiting. After the Spider-Man of his universe, Earth 1610 or the Ultimate Universe died, Miles, who is actually there to witness Peter's death, decides to take on the mantle of Spider-Man in his honor. Into the Spider-Verse actually did a really fantastic job of adapting this story. Up next, we have Spider-Gwen. Spider-Gwen first appeared in Edge of Spider-Verse issue 2 from 2014. In this universe, Gwen Stacy, not Peter Parker, was the one to be bitten by the spider. Sick of Gwen always having to stand up for him, this universe's Peter Parker decided to make himself a superhero, which turned him into the lizard and ultimately led to his death. This first appearance ends with Spider-Gwen getting recruited by Spider-Man UK to join other Spider-related characters from across the universe as they banded together to fight. The supervillain Morlun and his family who would eat the life essence of various spider totems, as they called it. This scene has just a ridiculous amount of spider characters. I love it though. Let's break it down and see how many different characters we can spot. First of all, right here, you see that? That looks to be Spider-Man from the PS4 game. If you haven't played this game, it's freaking incredible. Seriously, the gameplay, the storyline, everything is just top notch. This, in my opinion, is the best Spider-Man game out there. I even put it above the Miles Morales game that came out later. Speaking of which, I think that's actually another version of Miles standing beside him. This character in the glowing suit found way in the background, by the way, looks like it might be inspired by the Spider-Man Velocity suit found in the PS4 game. This person in the black and the yellow is wearing an armored suit from the comic books. A 2011 issue of Amazing Spider-Man wherein Peter loses his spider sense. And since he can no longer dodge bullets, he builds himself a new bulletproof suit. This one actually has me the most excited. This one right here because I think this character is actually Mayday Parker, AKA Spider-Girl, who first appeared in a 1998 issue of What If. In this alternate reality future, Peter Parker and Mary Jane's daughter gains superpowers. Peter quit being Spider-Man long ago after losing a leg in battle, but this doesn't stop Norman Osborn's grandson from trying to kill Peter as revenge for killing his grandfather. But May intervenes wearing a costume that once belonged to a clone of her father's. Spider-Girl is seriously great. Her series lasted hundreds of issues. Go check it out if you can. Let's zoom the camera out even farther to see more characters like Spinneret and Spiderling. Spinneret is actually Peter's wife, Mary Jane, and Spiderling is their daughter, May. In this universe, when May was still just a baby, Venom kidnapped her and Mary Jane to get to Peter. Peter was with the Avengers who were planning their attack on a supervillain called Regent. He left to save May and MJ, but with Spider-Man out of the fight, the villain Regent was able to defeat the other superheroes and take their powers for himself, ruling the world. Years later, Peter helps lead an uprising against Regent and is aided by Mary Jane and his daughter, May. Peter then creates MJ a suit which allows her to tap into his powers as Spinneret, and May, who's still figuring out her powers, calls herself Spiderling. All right, next we gotta talk about Spider Cop. You know, the Spider-Man dressed as a cop. Believe it or not, this character actually does come from the comics. I love how he has a mustache on the outside of his spider suit. Classic Spider Cop. He first appeared in Spider-Geddon issue 4 and he was recruited into the Spider Army by Spider-Gwen to help her defeat Morlun and the other Inheritors. Now, to the left and above Spider-Cop, we got Manga Spider-Man. First created in 2002, Mangaverse Peter Parker is the last member of a spider clan of ninjas and has been taught in martial arts by his sensei, Uncle Ben. After Ben's murder by Venom, Peter starts to train in secret so he can extract his revenge. Now, this character with the mechanical arms on her back appears to be Maybelle Riley, who first appeared in 2014 Spider-Verse, though the character is actually from the year 1895. After her father died, May used spare parts from his garage to create a suit with four mechanical arms which enabled her to climb walls. She also created mechanical web shooters. She then becomes a superhero and fights some really cool 19th century versions of Spider-Man villains. Now you see this Spider-Man that looks like a werewolf? Well, believe it or not, that's Werewolf Spider-Man. There's not a lot to say about this character. It's from the Marvel Zombies vs. Army of Darkness miniseries, which is as crazy as you might think it sounds. And basically, this character is from a world where everyone has been turned into werewolves. Now this guy with the paper bag on his head, that's the bombastic bag man. This costume is from a classic 1984 issue of Amazing Spider-Man. Reed Richards of the Fantastic Four tells Spider-Man that the suit he got on an alien world is actually a symbiote and it's alive. 
Reed was able to get the suit off of him and capture it. This suit would later become the Venom symbiote, by the way. Peter, without a costume, is given a spare Fantastic Four suit and a bag to cover his identity. Now this guy I'm not 100% sure on, but by the way he runs later in the trailer, I'm thinking that this is actually Flash Thompson with superpowers, which we first saw in a 1977 issue of What If? Wherein Flash gets bit by the spider instead of Peter, creates a Spider-Man costume and takes on the Vulture, and not having made web shooters like Peter Parker, falls to the ground and is killed. I think that's all the spider people I can make out in this scene. A lot of these characters are just Spider-Man costumes with like color swaps happening. Here is Peter B. Parker. You know him from the previous movie. You love him from the previous movie. I don't need to get into him. This character from her costume appears to be Spider-Woman, who in the comics is named Jessica Drew and is white. Jessica first appeared in Marvel Comics in 1976. Jessica was the daughter of a geneticist. When she became gravely ill, her father injected her with an experimental serum made from spider's blood. Her father would then go on to become a villain known as the High Evolutionary. All right, we got another scene here with a ton of spider characters. Let's point a few out. This guy with the gray and black armored suit is actually from a 1992 issue of Web of Spider-Man and is a spider suit that Peter created so that he could be bulletproof, which worked, but the suit actually just really slowed him down. And in the same issue, it was destroyed by the villain Thermite. This guy in the foreground on the left in red, to me, looks like it's probably Kane Parker, a clone of Spider-Man who first appeared in a 1994 issue of Web of Spider-Man. That's not him on the cover, by the way. Kane was a failed clone of Spider-Man who was slowly degenerating and mentally unstable. He would eventually become a hero and call himself the Scarlet Spider in memory of a different Spider-Man clone that went by that name. Okay, this guy on the left looks to be, and this is another really exciting one, the Superior Spider-Man. This comes from a 2013 storyline where Dr. Octopus is dying. So he switches his consciousness with Peter Parker's. And in the process, he lives through all of Peter's memories as Peter dies in Otto Octavius' body. Having been transformed by Peter's memories, he vows to be the superior Spider-Man. And he generally does do a lot of good, though he's much more vicious and calculating than Spider-Man. Check it out, it's a really good series. Next up, we got Miguel O'Hara, otherwise known as Spider-Man 2099, who appears to be a bit of an antagonist in this movie. Spider-Man 2099 first appeared in 1992 and is from the year, you guessed it, 2099. Miguel's story is a bit convoluted, but basically he has an evil boss that slipped him a drug called Rapture. The drug is so addictive that Miguel needs more of it or he will die. In an effort to get rid of the addiction, he experiments on himself splicing his genes with that of a spider's. Gaining fantastical spider powers, he then calls himself Spider-Man in honor of the old hero. And finally, this sequence gives us a glimpse at a hero that I did not expect to see in this. That's right, Spidey with the web cape right there is from the 1999 cartoon Spider-Man Unlimited a loose sequel to the 1994 Spider-Man the Animated Series where Spider-Man gets trapped on an alternate Earth. Thank you so much for watching. I actually really seriously appreciate it. I'm new to YouTube. Um, I have a TikTok account with 400,000 followers, so I'm used to making content, but not long form content. And it would really mean a lot to me if you could leave a comment and let me know what I'm doing well and what I could do better. And uh, please follow and share and like and comment and all that jazz.